Hello, we're on the river cam. And uh, we're just having a quick squiz to what's around. Isn't this wonderful? We're going to have uh, a few more of these set up. This is just the first. Oh, hi, bye bye, butterfly. And we're just going to do a slow pan along the river. And this is at Dusty Crossing, or Vumbi Crossing as it's known in Kiswahili, uh, Vumbi being dust. Okay, and we're going to have a look for some crocodiles. And one knows one must never smile at a crocodile. And uh, let's have a look. Oh, what's that on the opposite bank? I see uh, an antelope. Jared is our zoomie. Jared, do you see that creature walking uh, on the opposite bank? Let us have a little zoom zoom there, Gerard. We're going to have to get cam ops to, to help Jared. No, I'm only joking. Jared is doing this with a mouse, so it is quite difficult. Up, up, skis. Oh, there we go. What have we got? Some, is that a Tommy, I think? There's some Thompson's gazelles to the left. And with a very dark, stormy sky behind them. Isn't that gorgeous? Hello, Tom Toms. Hello, Francis. Now, Francis is wondering, are the crocodiles massing at the crossing points, waiting for the Thompson's gazelles to take the plunge? This is a little bachelor group of Thompson's gazelle. Um, they don't mass. So what happens with the crossing points, because they're so regular, uh, that they, they actually become almost resident around those crossing points, and uh, they, they will stay there for all year, waiting for the migration. And the, the biggest and baddest crocodiles dominate uh, the main crossing points where it's the easiest accessible for them to get a meal. And um, they will eat zebra, Thompson's gazelle, wildebeest, and whatever else happens to fall within their grasp. Oh, there's some martins by the looks of things that are swooping through there as well. We're not going to ask Jared to try to follow a, a, a swallow on the river cam. Um, but there we go, isn't that gorgeous? Now the coloration on the Thompson's Gazelle um, is, is quite unique. Well, not unique in itself, but very, very specific. Now you will notice quite a lot of animals will have dark black streaks at different places on their body, whereas their, where their bottoms are white. Oh, there goes another swallow through. Now there's a, there's a couple of different reasons for this. Of course, uh, one could say following mechanisms in the case of the water buck. But in, in, in animals like Thompson's gazelle that spend a lot of time in the open, and you can see their tails are working extra hard, um, the flies are normally attracted to dark colors, and uh, so they have darker patches to try and bring the flies away from their nether regions. And you can see around the bottom is white, and then they've got a dark tail. Oh, Tommy, you get a fright from another Tommy. Uh, you can almost see a Monty Python skit in the, in the male Thompson's. Like, hey, Tom, Tom, Tom. And no, you're Tom, Tom, Tommy, Tommy, Thomas, 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 Thomas. And there's Timothy all the way off to the right by himself. There we go. A little bit of mock, mock uh, jousting going on. Uh, this is not very serious, uh, quite playful. Uh, the Thompson's gazelle are one of the few animals here that do have a set breeding season in a rut. And uh, we will be seeing that later on in the year. We're all getting a little bit more serious, but this is all practice um, that makes perfect. And you can see even while jousting, uh, they will still keep those tails working like windscreen wipers, keeping away the flies. Whoop, 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 whoop. Almost like they have an extra motor inside their tails to try and keep those flies at bay. Well, oh, there we go, a little bit more serious. You also notice and um, they're quite prominent glands on the Thompson's gazelle's face, uh, which is quite interesting because uh, some of them are, are semi-resident. They will move through areas. Oh, I know. Oh, I won. Tom, Tom beat Thomas. Uh, uh, Timothy's still the loser out to the right all by himself. Well done, Tom. Thomas is vanquished. Oh, yeah, let's continue down the river. Now, it doesn't seem like there are any crocodiles out at this very moment. There is a log. That's not a crocodile. Oh, let's look carefully. We see it. Oh, there's a crocodile. Never smile at a crocodile. Oh, 
that is one of the large cocks that will be waiting. Now, it's quite difficult to, to tell. Ha! Uh, Deborah, I was already actually starting to answer your question. Um, how difficult is it to tell um, between male and female? Now, Deborah, Nile crocodiles, the females will seldom get uh, over three meters. The males tend to be much, much bigger. And also, oh, he just blinked. Ah, I saw a crocodile blink in the blink of a crocodile's eye. Uh, here we go. Now, generally, this one I would say is a male. Now, it's probably a bit bigger than three meters, but also if we have a, a look at his head, you can see those very big sort of cranial crests that are made out of, out of bone. Oh, there's another blink of a crocodile's eye. Now, those are more pronounced in males. Also, the, the thick plating, armor plating around the neck is also more pro pronounced in males. Uh, and the reason for that is the battle for, for females uh, and for ideal spots where they can uh, keep females and mate. So, uh, depending on where you are in Africa, the, the breeding season for crocodiles can vary slightly, but it, it normally starts hotting up at the end of uh, winter. So, from um, August, September, they tend to start getting into a bit of battles um, over core areas that hold lots of females. Um, and then by September, they are in full swing. Now, they normally lay, depending, as I said, it can vary a little bit month to month in Africa. They can normally lay around December, January, and uh, then it'll be about 90, 90 days to 110 days before those little critters hatch. Now, how you get male and female out of the eggs is quite interesting because it all depends on the temperature. So you will find all the, the eggs that are at the or laid first, which are at the bottom of the crocodile's pit, um, will generally be kept at around uh, 30 to 31 degrees Celsius, and that ensures that they are almost all female. Now, up at the top, uh, the ones that are closest to the sunny surface um, will normally be hatched at about 32 to 30 degree, 3 degrees Celsius, which ensures they are all male. So that's quite a fascinating little bit of crocodilian uh, information. Now, we're going to leave this crocodile who's waiting very patiently for what Scott's got on camera.